All right, conclusion. So homosexual squatters, uh, at the end of the of the day, are wanderers. Uh, these are people who abandon you in a time of trouble. They live by second, minute, hour, day, and then continue that process after that full day. Uh, they create a vision of homosexual squatting. That means that they are not ready to exit that mindset. And just because you have a different mindset doesn't mean that they're ready to exit that mindset. There's a um, change in our mindset chart that I teach in my English classes, uh, the 1301 classes. And it comes from Carol Dweck and uh, her book, The Mind, uh, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success. And I think it's a little bit more of that title. Uh, where she's talking about the difference between fixed mindset and growth mindset. And fixed mindset is that you believe your abilities are uh, fixed, uh, that they cannot change over time, right? And that uh, when you are confronted with obstacles, you tend to uh, believe uh, that that failure is, is essentially the only option, right? That you fail at everything, so it makes sense for you to fail. Growth mindset is that you believe your abilities can change over time and that uh, that you're very good at listening to uh, criticism, right? You, uh, you sort of assess it and apply it to your life. If you come across an obstacle that is in your way, that is affecting you, that may be setting you back, you look at that, assess it and say, okay, now how best can I... Um, um, change my understanding about that and then you change your understanding, you apply a better understanding and then you continue on your way. Think about fixed mindset and growth mindset in terms of the classroom when you have to take a test. So the fixed mindset person is always the type of person who says, okay, I'm an A student. I'm an A student. When you say that, however, um, when you say that you are an A student, you run the risk of uh, not taking on more risk. Because if you are used to only receiving A's, you're not going to take on more risk to learn more things because then that's going to affect your perception of your A. Because what if you take on more risk and you don't do so well on the um, test and you only get a B plus and then that affects how you do things. So you would rather just not do it at all. Okay. The Growth mindset person would be the type of person who is in a class and it, it could be a math class and they say, okay, I got a 60 on the first test. What do I need to uh, learn? Okay, I'm missing something. So then they will study more uh, and then they may get a 76 on the next test. Okay, so I'm doing, I'm, I'm, I'm doing a little bit better, right? So, but that means that they're four points short, short, short of an 80. So that means that, that there's still opportunity for them to move from a C to a B. So then they continue to study more and more and more, uh, get help, get tutoring, and then they get an 85 on the next test. Okay, so, so now they have moved from a 60, 76 to an 85. So now they are feeling much more encouraged that they can learn this thing, this, this thing called math. And so they can stay at the 85 and still be and still reflect a person with a growth mindset, right? Because they were willing to change and learn more from the 60 grade. Uh, but there's still an opportunity to get an A because they're five, sh uh, five points short of a 90. And so uh, they, um, they ram up um, all of their study habits. They get more tutoring. They do as much as they can to learn it and learn it well, and then they actually end up um, end up getting a 92 on the next test. So again, 60, 76, 85 to 92, and that's what a growth mindset looks like. That even though they could have been happy with the 85, because maybe they set the goal to pass the class, and passing the class is with a 70, right? Uh, they set a goal to pass the class, but then they realized, you know what? I got an 85. I wonder if I can get a 90. Yeah, I think I'm going to go for that, right? And they ended up with a 92. Now, in the, at the end of the day, they probably averaged uh, B, B minus C plus, right, in the class, right, because of the different grades and plus, and plus because of other, of other factors, right? But they were willing to look at the 60, 
they were they were willing to look at the, the fixed mindset will be so preoccupied with the 60 that they don't want to learn. They say that it's unfair, it's not right. Okay, she took off wrong points, uh, more points for this. Then they will uh, begin to compare their 60 with somebody else's 60 and see through the lens. Yeah, but how she give you how she give you points and she didn't give me points when when in reality the math teacher took off points for everybody, right? Uh, if you're getting a 60. Uh, but they don't see it like that. They can't see beyond the fact that they got the 60 and it's not right and it's not fair and they're not going to do anything to try harder. They're just going to uh, stay in it and they may decide to not do anything at all and fail the class. Strangely enough, even though they believe they may be an A student, they may actually purposely just let it go and fail the class altogether. Okay? Either way, they're not going to do anything. And so what they'll do is they are the types of uh, people who will go and talk to your boss, you know, the teacher's boss, and go and, and talk to the dean and go and write letters and go and talk to their father and things like that. When the actual goal would be to figure out how did I get the 60? In other words, how at least if I look at, look at it at the next grade level, how did I get the 60 and not the 70? Okay, then that gives you some time to reflect and critically assess and think about what am I doing that I'm I'm getting a 60 and what am I doing that I'm getting a 60 and not at least passing. And then the more you stay with that and you and and you go over the math problems and you think about it and you wonder about it, okay, well maybe I should okay, maybe I should do Okay, maybe I should just do this. Okay, maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do... You come up with different ways, and the more you do that, the more you become interested in actually learning the concept. And so you stick with it, and you learn it, and then you do better, and you get to at least a 70. And then and then you're still mad with a fixed mindset, uh, but you are moving yourself from fixed to growth, not realizing it. You're moving yourself from fixed to growth. And if you continue that pattern you'll find that you are capable of moving your abilities from one type of mindset to the next. Because you can't say, I always pose this question that I got from an article. Can a person from a fixed mindset change to a growth mindset? And I ask my students and they automatically say, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because people live in aspirational thinking. They live in hope. They live in, oh yeah, absolutely, right? But in order for you to uh, to um, fulfill one of the qualities of the growth mindset, you're going to have to address your fixed mindset. And one of those qualities of the fixed mindset is that you ignore criticism. The growth mindset is going to accept criticism because the growth mindset in this case is willing to go to the tutor. It's willing, willing to ask the teacher about the problem. And then the teacher tells them to go to the tutoring center. And then the growth mindset person goes to the tutoring center. And the tutoring uh, tutor tells them what he did wrong. And then he self-corrects. And then he moves on. And so the only way that you're going to be sure that you can uh, uh, transition from fixed to growth is that you got to address at least your inability to receive criticism. That's what's going on with a lot of homosexual squatters, ho homeless people, that they're not willing to uh, address the criticism. They're not willing to self-correct. They would rather stay in the mindset of homosexual squatting. They have set it up as a vision for their life. Um, if you think about vision, think about vision statements that a company might create. Say, for instance, like we're looking at, you know, McDonald's. And, and, and I don't have, uh, have their vision statement right in front of me, so I'm just going to uh, kind of fake it for a minute. So if their vision is, we want to become the premier or the preferred burger for, uh, uh, for people who like burgers, meaning that out of all the options that people have to get a burger, they prefer to go to McDonald's. That doesn't mean that they don't eat other burgers, right? It's just that they prefer to eat McDonald's, meaning that if they are in a rush and there is a Whataburger or Burger King on one, one side of the uh, street 
and and across the street is um, a McDonald's. McDonald's may be have easier convenience because then you may see a McDonald a a McDonald's on every block. Okay, then that means that McDonald's has more stores, more restaurants than the Burger King. So then that's how they might become the preferred burger place for people who want a burger because then it's just easy to step into a McDonald's, go get a little hamburger and some fries uh, and a drink, and then I can go back to work. Sometimes it has a lot to do with convenience. Uh, because I don't think it always has a lot to do with the taste of the burger unless it's uh it's a um a premier burger a um um a certain type of burger that each each um each restaurant offers some people love a big mac but some people love love a water burger some people love a jack in the box some people uh love like independent restaurant um you know type burgers right the meat is real thick but what what the vision statement is suggesting is that we as McDonald's want to become the preferred burger out of all the burger options that you have. Okay, so then look at the vision in that way. And then the mission statements are individual products, things like that, that you attach on uh, to mission. I mean, uh, as a mission statement, all of, of departments, things like that. So then when you say that, Look at the vision of the homosexual squatter. I prefer being a homosexual squatter. Out of all the options that I have as an adult, I prefer and and and, and you know split it up for a minute. I prefer being a homosexual, and I prefer squatting. And now I prefer being a homosexual squatter. And out of all the decisions. And all the options that I have available to me and the opportunities that I could create uh, to be stable, sustain stability, uh, be self-sufficient, I would rather be, I prefer to be a homosexual squatter. And that's their mindset. They are not ready to exit that mindset. So letting them come and live and washing their sheets and clothes and cleaning their rooms and feeding them and giving them sex and all that kind of stuff, that is not going to change their mindset. They want to be in that mindset. And the longer you stay in that situation, the longer it's going to be hard for you to get out of that mindset because eventually you will become them. So homosexual, homosexual squatters are wanderers. They abandon you in a time of trouble. Uh, they live by second minute hour day, continue that process after that full day. They create a vision of homosexual squatting. They are not ready to exit that mindset.